people this have conference it, or, will now be recorded. Or I can upload to the to the system, but I, I didn't find a way to do it, Francesca. So uh, you you may help me uh, in a few days. And and the idea is that the, this document, this deliverable, is going to be presented at the end of May, and the consortium decided to to make this public for the workshop. And we are discussing if the final uh, deliverable may be available for for everyone. The idea is. Uh, uh, to have uh, 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 the development of the BDTA about home monitoring privacy metrics, a tool we developed in, in another project, uh, to continue with the, with this work and to have a projection uh, on digital building permits. Okay, so we thought to apply a methodology at the beginning. Um, that is what I'm going to show you. Uh, I will show you a, a process example, uh, which is a BIM validation, just one of them. Uh, we perform a simulation for all the processes. We discover some potential improvements. We, uh, we have some meetings with the pilots, with the, partner, the partners of the pilots to have their feedback. And finally, we have a, a proposition right now of uh, uh, some protocols just to, to take into account these privacy problems. So uh, right now the project is implementing these protocols in some of the uh, templates, the processes we have detected that may have problems with privacy. Okay, the, the home monitoring privacy metric is a tool. It was presented already in CEN 442. And uh, the idea was to, to have uh, or to achieve privacy by design in an in, in intrinsic concept. Uh, that means that during data collection, uh, not after collecting the data, you have some processes that uh, you control the privacy uh, uh, level is, is uh, compliant or is uh, assumed by every, everyone. So uh, after dividing the whole home monitoring into categories and processes, we uh, implemented an, a very simple algorithm uh, thinking on a future certification and making the evaluation of privacy more objective. I mean, we get a number and with that number, we can decide if the whole process of collecting data and use of data is uh, compliant or not. So metrics means objective evaluation and um, that is very useful for designers because they can they can see if there is an alternative solution okay that can be compliant so uh, we de uh, develop uh, an excel express it uh, we don't have time to to show it but in the workshop we, we are going to to show that example and uh, we convert something that is uh, subjective or very difficult to evaluate into a number something with easy evaluation so next step would be in the DigiCheck project to study uh, the implications of privacy in these uh, processes. So that what we did is to, to make like a big catalog of processes. We discovered about 84 different processes. We were following some regulations, especially France and Spain. Uh, they are quite similar. Uh, we have pilots right now in UK, in Austria, and uh, there is another one. Well, I don't remember now. No, and, and Madrid, sorry, and in Spain. And collecting all processes possible in all these uh, pilots, uh, we finally we decided to model or, or, or better to extract from these 84 processes to extract 21 templates, which could be similar processes. Uh, and we decided to simulate them. Okay? The simulation is uh, quite simple. We were using a, a software called Visagi. Uh, it follows uh, something called BPMN, uh, Business Processes Modeling and Notation. So you are modeling the process with these uh, uh, tasks and these uh, diversions and whatever. And finally, assigning to this task some values, you can simulate uh, which is the typical time or uh, resources you need 
or things like that. Okay. This could be, for example, the beam validation. The beam validation, uh, in the case of uh, some cities, uh, is carried out by by a company, not by the administration. So this company is checking the beam validation of the project, and they later they uh, issue a, a certificate saying that the project is compliant with uh, uh, more or less the the necessities of the project or whatever. So in this case, we we have model here, which is the validation of uh, the level of geometry, the level of information, linked information, class detection, uh, consistency of analysis model, all this stuff. Obviously, these processes may be different. And in different locations, they may have different check-ins, different procedures. But this is like a, a general example based in our experience. And the idea was to, to detect which processes could have privacy implications. Don't forget that. So just uh, with this general study and these 21 templates, uh, something that we saw is, for example, that the, the visa check, which could be the, the process where the professionals, they had to uh, to show a certificate of some kind of uh, uh, checking that they are the professional, let's say they are. Uh, we have seen that in in three X scenarios, the the improvement could be from eight hours to one hour, okay, which is not a big difference in hours, okay. Uh, but it's something that we have checked with professional association, and they said, hey, yeah, it, it is possible. Uh, appropriate would be the project presentation. In this case, the project presentation it it is 100% manual with uh, papers, drawings, etc. Uh, to the most advanced way to do it, perhaps with a digital twin, we see that we can pass from 100 hours to one hour, or in order of magnitude. So this is a, a big improvement. And, and the third comment I want to say is uh, the network connection it could be a process that is not with the administration many times. What we saw is that this process could be a huge amount of hours, more than 1,000 hours. Well, this uh, this is uh, this process usually take place at the end of the of the construction, and may have a lot of implications and economic problems with the construction companies. So, uh, with all these results, yes, we have meetings with the, the pilots. These are the three pilots. It is very interesting because in our DigiCheck project, we have a totally different construction problems, I would say. Uh, in case of Realia in Madrid, they have a residential buildings. And they told us that the, the main problem or the problem they wanted to solve, basically, is the network connection process. Uh, because this is at the end of the construction, they are selling the apartments. So a delay of six months is terrible for them. The second project is a commercial building in Austria. Um, they were describing the project presentation. Uh, the, this is a company called Cree. It was very interesting because even uh, having a manual process of process presentation, the processes were very well done. I mean, the calculations, the models, they were very well done. They were proposing to have a better project presentation, perhaps more interactive with 3D, with presentations uh, with virtual reality, augmented reality. But it is interesting that even in manual form, a good project can be, um, I mean, excellent, right? The third project is about civil construction. It is a, a motorway in UK, and the problem they presented was the, the uh, environmental permits they need during the construction. Uh, if they find an animal, they have several protocols. They have to stop works. They they have to go one auditor or or inspector to the work, and that process stopping the works it is uh, destroying the economy of the of the work. So they were very interested on how to implement the third-party report process. I mean, a third party, uh, somebody outside the project has to go there, has to make an inspection, how to issue a report, and somebody has to approve it. So in this case, all of this was totally digitized, very quick, but the final process of approval by the administration took like eight weeks. So it was unaffordable. So, um, these are 
the the finally the protocols we we thought that they could be they could have something in relation with uh, privacy and this is a, an ongoing task we have to implement now these protocols in the processes we are going to use uh, a laser tool which is a, a, a tool for defining the requirements uh, it is um, um, it is implemented in an ontology space of data um, and the idea is to to pass all these requirements to protocols to processes design processes and later to have practical implementations in the pilots okay so some conclusions uh, we think that the BPM process methodology is quite useful. If you if you see, we are following a different approach than the Czech pro project because in Czech, I think and correct me if I am wrong, uh, you have like a big uh, process. Uh, we prefer to have like small processes PPP. Even when we integrate one processes inside another one, we prefer to to simplify it a lot just uh, summarizing the, that processes in times and and within a statistical distribution just because we think that a very uh, a simplified process is easy to understand and you can get some inf some information from the simulations okay if, if you have a simulation of a, a very complex diagram it's, it's impossible to to find out or to to extract conclusions from there important the pilot's feedback is consistent with the process simulation so we have discovered that something that we get from simulation is consistent with the experience of the, the pilot processes and now we know which processes and how to implement the privacy protocol so this is something uh, valuable for our project uh, this is going to be presented next week in the workshop and the idea is that people going there can you know say something or propose something or to say hey we are doing this and that and to have some practical um, feedback from all the, these problems. And Thank that you, Bob. That's all. Thank you very much. So, what are the questions for Pablo? It's a very, very relevant uh, topic, I think. So, it's very good to see that someone is uh, is tackling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the um, the. Privacy, you have to take into account that um, many people is today speaking about artificial intelligence, but the, the, the base of the applications of the artificial intelligence, they are based on data. So uh, the problem may be in the collection of data, not just in how people is using the data. If the collection, if you don't have access to some data, you, you cannot do, it's impossible to do something with that. So problems of artificial intelligence, in many, many cases, the problem is the collection of data. They shouldn't have that, those data. On the other hand, there are people implementing very good uh, artificial intelligence applications, and they could be working in cameras or devices. If we can certify or, or approve somehow that those uh, uh, devices are not passing that information to another level, that devices could be compliance with privacy. I mean, sophisticated cameras evaluating uh, people attending a theater. If those cameras are only transmitting three or four data, alphanumeric data, they are not transmitting any image, they can be compliant with privacy. So if we have an objective tool for defining how privacy can be compliance or not, that is great for development as well for new devices. So privacy in the BDTA is something we consider very important. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? And are you using any um, software components uh, or specific uh, yeah, structure uh, to, to manage these um, um, the privacy issues uh, such as uh, accesses and uh, um, yeah account management and so on are you providing some specific solution for that 
Yeah, the, the privacy metric, the tool for privacy metrics, it is an Excel spreadsheet. It has been shared with the working group of privacy in the BDTA. So last year we have a discussion about the, the categories division and the algorithm and the whole uh, um, assembly. They say that it was okay. So we presented that to the standardization group. Uh, now it's just presented. It, there is no discussion yet about the, the privacy metrics tool. The idea would be to, to build like a certification on top of the algorithm. Okay. And uh, it can be, it can take two or three years, not, not less than that. But it would be great to have more feedback from people working with um, uh, home monitoring or in general information around uh, buildings and, and people living in buildings, basically. I have a question, Pablo. When you are uh, delivering these images, uh, there are some cameras that they have a little algorithm uh, recognizing the faces and making pixels of them. This is not providing enough privacy for the process. But yeah, the, the problem of cameras is, is funny because there are people developing cameras that uh, pixel in the, the image, you cannot recognize who is there. So ca you can be detecting presence of detecting even the metabolic state of humans. Very interesting. But the, the funny thing is that when they have tried to go inside the market, everybody's stopping those devices due to privacy problems. But which problems? I mean, if, if they are compliant, with, if they are doing the right things, they should be compliant. So there is no tool for defining the, the compliancy of those devices. That is a real problem. So we try to do it with this privacy metric tool. Uh, there was another interesting project some weeks ago. We uh, were presenting a proposal for optimizing the energy management of theaters. Okay. Um, there is a research center in Sweden and they have a very nice camera. And this camera can be uh, detecting the gender, the body mass index, and the age of the human enter, uh, in the entrance of the theater. Okay? The idea was, OK, we can put that camera in a device, and that device is only transmitting four numbers. So nobody can, can see the image, really. But the problem was that when they presented that device, everybody says, no privacy issues, you cannot use it. So the market is, is reacting against these devices because they don't have tools for defining really which is compliant and what is not compliant. So the importance of privacy, I mean the practical privacy, a tool for defining something which is uh, compliant or not is, is very important. In digital building permits, it's very interesting because you don't have humans, you don't have really occupants. You are in the face of uh, uh requesting a license yeah but the the building you are designing some months later are going to be in the hands of occupants so there is an implicit information there that should be managed somehow if that information about the the drawings of the building all that stuff is in the hands of one administration that administration must be sure that that information is kept secure in the council for example Thank so. you. And may I ask uh, also, um, well, maybe Jan, Chris, uh, uh, and Ophelia, uh, and others who are already implementing building permits, how are you tackling these issues? If you are. <laughs> Well, the, the problem I, is many. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, I mean a bus, so it's difficult. But um, we are for now. For now, in Geneva, um, human are essential, and uh, we don't want to replace it with the uh, IA or something like this. It's uh, not ethical and political for Geneva. So for now, we. We just um, have some tools to to help humans to decide. Uh, 
I think the um, uh, the question of privacy is, uh, uh, and security is, of course, uh, a very important one. And uh, I really like the, the the way you phrased it and and the approach that you know when we're dealing with building permits, there are really no occupants and it's mostly just you know um, how to say a technical object. So uh, and in Estonia, what we've done is we've tried to uh, as much as possible separate building information from any kind of private information because whenever there is personal information or private information about a person involved, you automatically get, you know, lots of issues and problems. You get locked down, starting with GDPR, with all kinds of uh, regulations, uh, privacy protection, etc., cetera, which, which are there all there for a good purpose. But when we're talking about a, a construction, a building, then it really doesn't contain any, well, to be honest, any private information because um unless you're dealing with of course some uh, some uh, uh, structures related with security forces military etc uh those are that's a different topic but if we're talking about you know regular office buildings residential buildings then they really we need to keep that as part of the built environment which should be as open as possible and uh and because even well private houses Okay, there is also maybe a, a more issue of privacy, but if it's uh, an apartment house, if it's an office, then you're going to be selling and leasing and anyway, exchanging uh, these properties are going to be exchanging hands and to keep the information about how they were constructed as open as possible so that, you know, the, uh, the, the following owners will also have access to this information is, uh, is very, uh, very beneficial. And that's why uh, we really um, we did an analysis also in, in Estonian legislation, and we don't see any issue why uh, why um, the building permit process uh, and the BIM models associated with that uh, can't be open data. More or less, they are, and that's the direction we want to take this. Um, so, uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's really always a question about you know privacy and 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 people kind of. Um, uh, then uh, scared about the uh, about the um, wolf they don't see, so it's always. But it turns out to be a puppy dog. So why why be scared about it? Yeah, um, one one important thing about BIM is that many people understand BIM like the structure and architecture of the building, and they don't consider the installation the MEP installations. When you speak about MEP installations, you are speaking about, for example, uh, mechanical ventilation system that are connected online with the fabricator. When you are describing the cameras in the common places of the building, nobody is checking exactly how those cameras are working in the project. Okay. Uh, all the ICT installations of the building, the IT installations, the data, um, um, I mean, telephone connections, at least in Spain, there must be a specific report about all those installations. They don't consider any privacy potential issue. So perhaps we are, when speaking about uh, building permits, we are a bit ahead of potential problems, but BIM now is offering the possibility of packing a lot of information and send that information very quickly to third parties. So it's a, a, a very rich information and at the same time is portable. So, whoops, very silly. You receive a project in the council and a worker in the council can pack that information and bloops and send to a third party. Because additional to privacy problems, we discover that there is a, a uh, an intellectual property rights potential problem in some processes. For example, some professional associations, if they uh, they have to sign or to give the approval to one of the professionals, they request the project. And later that project is not controlled. It can be passed to another professional. So, And that is a problem because there is a, an intellectual property of that professional doing that specific solution. So 
we, we are trying to collect the, these potential problems. We find, for example, and this is very important to have the feedback of the pilots, very important. Uh, we discovered that something which is probably totally uh, innocent, the architecture, can be the architecture uh, making any impact on, on privacy. Um, we discovered some project, there is a famous one in Seville, uh, where the, the new building is, is putting people, a massive amount of people, just in front of the window of one of the, of the tenants of, uh, of a building. So nobody was checking in the council that uh, installing some, some uh, pathways of people just at 10 meters of one window, it was affecting people living there. It's, it's a monument in Seville and, uh, well, it's, it's very stupid. Uh, but that's a privacy problem. I mean, in construction, in design, there is something that the, the people could be checking that uh, some architecture can be uh, influencing uh, third parties, you know? So that's our job in this project. And, and uh, of course, uh, we want to have uh, some feedback from the other two uh, European projects. And we still have uh, a couple of years, but it would be interesting to, to have some conclusions at the end of the project and to pass those conclusions to, to policy makers and legisl legislators to, to have some, uh, uh, I would say, processes in advance to avoid problems of privacy. Because you are right, we don't have occupants during the, the building, the construction. Yeah, valid points, and I totally agree. We need to uh, we need to try it out. We need to do pilots, and we need to have uh, start doing BIM-based permits and see how it works, and and work from there. But coming back to the question of you know the the architects and the intellectual rights, then uh, well, uh, this is uh, of course a discussion that is always ongoing. Um, but uh, as long as we are using open formats and IFC. Um, I think we're we're quite safe in that regard because it's uh, of course it's uh, I mean architecturally you can just look at a building take a picture of it and you can replicate it I mean come yeah. on so if you have an IFC model so what it's still not the original software uh, model uh, that was used to create where there might be algorithms uh, where there is intelligence and this is not what we want to use in the BIM based permit process we want to use open formats. Uh, as much as needed and as little as possible let's put it that way and um but yeah i, I know some some architects as well who are very uh worried and skeptical about this but uh, but then again look at all the generative ai stuff going on i would be much more more worried about what's happening on that front than you know sharing ifcs which is a, is a benefit to everybody but luckily at least in estonia it's it's a, it's no longer an issue so the architects and uh, have also realized that uh, they're not giving away really any of their IP and what makes, you know, what is the added value of an architect uh, and the project. So, but of course, well, these discussions the... need to need to happen, but uh, but we shouldn't get too stuck on discussions and, and, and hypotheses because then we will be discussing and, and evaluating until the end of time. We just need to do it and, and see how it works. Yeah, what, what we are going to present probably or to, or to propose is to have like a, a borderline because you are right when you are so you, you must show some public information of your project because some uh, the authorization scheme is based and uh, uh, the public administration must be controlling new project. They must be coordinating how your project is uh, in accordance to regulations in the city with other buildings, blah, blah. That's okay. But one scenario could be uh, the designer is sending the IFC to the administration, okay, a project presentation project process. But there could be another scenarios where a third party is receiving the IFCs and the administration can be, can be checking the, the, the building but not having the IFCs because they are accessing a third party platform, a digital tool platform, but they are not keeping all that, all that information. I mean, there is a borderline where of course you, you need to show public information, but uh, behind that line, 
that could be private information and that means as well uh, analysis or special designs in in our pilot in in austria is very interesting because the the company doing that project Cree, they are using a very advanced technology with with uh, good construction they 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 told us that they had to sit down with the people in the council explaining them why they could be doing this and that so they were explaining their technology to the administration okay if this administration is not honest in a week they are they can be transmitting all that information to a competitor so there are maybe a protection problem there so but that's something we are in the process of discussion and it would be very nice if uh, any of you is interested in of these processes i invite you to have in, in contact with the with the bdta and the and the BD, uh, BDT congress we organize every year which is intended to have these discussions face to face and to collect feedback from you okay okay thank you very much for the interesting discussion uh, so we can follow it next week, first of all, and maybe in the next yeah. uh, meetings.